Christian Pevarelli here, co-founder of We Are No Code. Today's video, I really wanted to hit a big question that I continue to have, app development. There's an app for this, there's an app for that. Apps, 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 what you hear all the time. Should you build an app? That's a totally different question. I'm here today to teach you about app development for beginners, and I wanna tell you about the two paths that you have as a non-technical founder, a non-technical person, someone who doesn't know how to code, et cetera. Let's go. Okay, so before we get into this topic, I wanted to tell you a really alarming figure. 90% of the apps in the App Store are zombie apps. They are not being used. So a very important question before jumping into this is, should I be building an app? Should I be building something else? Am I ready to build an app? Now let's say that you figure that all out already. Let's talk about the two different paths that you can take to build your app. The first one is going to be the traditional path, and the other one is going to be a path using technologies called no code which is essentially, these are platforms that allow you to build software without necessarily having to understand coding language or having to code. So let's talk about the traditional path just to get this kicked off. The traditional path is essentially to hire someone who is a developer who can build this product out for you. The alternative to that is to learn how to code. And if you don't know how to code, let's be frank, most people don't have three years to become incredibly good coders just to build out an app. So let's talk about hiring a developer to build your app. This is what the normal cycle will look like. First, discovery and defining the scope. So this essentially is going to be a conversation, a long conversation of a bunch of meetings with the agency or the developer that is to translate your idea into a very specific scope of work. So here we're talking about really understanding what it is that we're trying to build, and more importantly, which features are going to be required. Once we've done that, what we're gonna to wanna to do is to build the wireframes. So a wireframe is really just about understanding what the design will look like without actually creating the design. So really talking about user flows. So how is this experience gonna work? What are the different screens? What are the different layouts of those screens that we're gonna need? Now at this point, there's gonna be a lot of back and forth, but once that's sort of agreed upon, they're going to jump into designing the different individual screens for you and then creating clickable prototypes using a tool like Envision, for example, where you can make these designs come to life, right? But still, it's going to be a clickable prototype. So essentially designs that you can click through that gives people an illusion that you have an app, but the app is not actually developed and it is not coded yet. So it's not functional. Once that's been done, we're going to take those design screens and we're going to give them to a coder, a developer, who's essentially going to build the functionalities behind these screens, these design screens that you've agreed upon prior to this. Once the process of development has finished, you're going to test the app. Usually it will be built either on iOS or Android. It could also be built on both, but more likely than not, you're gonna to have to make a choice between one or or the other. And only after that are you ready to launch. Now, as you can imagine, the number of people that are required to get all of these jobs done are a designer, a UI UX specialist. You're gonna need a front-end developer. You're gonna need a back-end developer. And you're also gonna need someone who's talking about strategy. Strategy part can be also someone who is already takes up one of these different roles. So essentially we're talking about hiring between three and five people part-time through this agency to get this job done. And so that means that the cost is usually anywhere from $30,000 all the way up to several hundred thousand dollars to get this built. Obviously, not everyone has that kind of money to throw around every day. And of course, since there are a lot of people involved in the process, it's going to be a process that takes between six and 18 months to actually go from idea to actually end product. Now, let's talk about option number two, the no-code option, the no-code route, building apps without code. Here, there are still some steps that you can't skip, right? The first one is going to be to define the scope and do the research that you need to do. That's not something that you can skip. And more often than not, you're gonna want to reduce the number of features that you're building. Number two, you're going to do the wireframes. So essentially you can draw these out by hand and it really is going to explain where you see these different screens leading, what is the user flow. 
So how are people using your app? Two is the same step. We're still going to wireframe. So essentially just drawing those individual screens and how you see them looking. Number three is actually where we're gonna win a lot of time. And that is because we're gonna straight up go from idea into building a fully functional product, leveraging no-code tools. Now there's lots of no-code tools out there. I won't get into that. You can check out our website at wearenocode.com. We talk a lot about it and you can obviously reach out to us, but you can leverage these visual interfaces to actually build your app yourself. You can use Adalo, you can use Webflow, you can use Bubble, there are loads out there and then you're ready to launch your product in the market. So in this scenario, actually the really big advantage is that you only need one person who can do all of these different jobs and then it's gonna cost you between $1,000 and $2,000 to get your app built. Now, yes, what's the catch? You're gonna have to build it out yourself and it's gonna take a little bit of time, but a couple of weeks or a couple of months to actually learn how to do it, but the cost is significantly lower. And for most people who are early stage in startups, they're really interested in reducing the cost because they know that there's high risk in building this startup. And best of all, when you build things with no code, it literally takes weeks. So between six and 18 weeks, whereas before we were talking about six to 18 months. Now, I'm not here to tell you that one is much better than the other. It really just depends the scenario that you're actually in. If you're an early stage startup, you have an idea and you wanna bring it to market, absolutely, you should be looking into building it out with no code because no code will allow you to bring your ideas to market quickly, to adapt those ideas into what the customer actually wants and doing all of that without spending a bunch of money. However, if you're looking to build an app for Coca-Cola and you're an agency, then it might make sense for you to build it out with the traditional path. If you have any questions about this video, please shoot them below. Happy to answer any of the questions revolving the two paths that you have when it comes to building your app. My name is Christian Pevarelli and follow us. This is Behind the Movement. We're teaching people how to build startups without necessarily having to have any technical skills. It's a super exciting movement and we can't wait to have you join us. Hope this was a value. Again, smash that subscribe button, like, follow, do anything else that you wanna do. You can shoot us with a money gun. <laughs> we'll see you next week, take care.